Hi, I'm Dave McCrory, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, building a faster, highly available data tier for active workloads, uh, which is a mouthful. Uh, the, the reality is building a data tier is something that turns out to be a lot more complicated uh, than people expect. Uh, generally, uh, you begin down the path of trying to put together a couple of different data sources with some applications on top. And what ends up happening is you realize that uh, things start to get complicated very, very quickly. Uh, you build some services. It turns out those services don't quite synchronize uh, just the way you'd want them to. You have problems with integrating uh, all of those services together. Uh, you might choose to do some microservices. Uh, it turns out that's hard, too, um, especially if you don't have kind of a solid foundation to start with. Uh, really, that's based on several fundamental trends that I've seen uh, in, uh, really in the industry as a whole. Uh, so first, you hear a lot about uh, scale or fail. Uh, data is increasing rapidly. Uh, everything that you hear, uh, there's 4.4 uh, zettabytes currently. Uh, out there, and by 2020, there'll be 44 zettabytes of data. So uh, exponential growth, 90% uh, of the data in the world has been created in the last two years. You may or may not have heard that. Uh, it's only increasing. So with all of this data uh, comes more of these problems with this data tier. Uh, you hear about data isolation, uh, data lakes. Uh, I... I see a, a degree of usefulness for data lakes. The biggest problem with data lakes, uh, you have to be able to get your data out and use it for something. Simply throwing all of your data into a single repository really doesn't let you do a lot with it. Uh, I don't care what you call it. Uh, it's still something where you have to then act on that data and be able to turn that data into information that can be used which turns out to be a little bit more complicated than just uh, storing it in some pool of storage somewhere. So that brings us to another issue of how are you actually going to deal with that data and CAP theorem. Uh, Eric Brewer created CAP theorem. Uh, for those not familiar, the C is consistency, the A is availability, and the P is partition tolerance. You can only have two of them, uh, hence the little black triangle in the middle you can't have uh, all three. So generally, you have people choose consistency and availability, or uh, they choose partition tolerance and availability. If you choose the C and the P, the consistency and the partition tolerance, and you don't have availability, then you can't actually get to the data, which really wouldn't be all that useful, at least to most companies. It is really secure, though. If it's not available, uh, nobody can hack it or get to it. Uh, so. And finally, uh, that brings us to a third challenge, which is data gravity. As you end up storing all this data um, in one or more locations, uh, you end up having applications and services that want to leverage this data. And they're more advantaged the closer they are to the data. So it's the idea of what data locality drives us to, lower latency and higher bandwidth. Uh, the closer you are, the lower your latency, and likely the higher the bandwidth some combination thereof. Uh, that makes the data attractive, and as you interact with that data, uh, you create more data. So every interaction is creating additional data. That could be data in the data source, or it could be data based on the idea of interaction, say log files and other things. So this has a growth effect. So all of these things compound uh, upon each other. These are all problems that we've, uh, that we've been working to address at Basho. And generally, uh, I think we've done a, a good job with React, and I think you'll see quite a few interesting announcements over the, few, over the next few months. Uh, one of the uh, things we announced yesterday was the Basher Data Platform, and that deals with uh, the beginning of dealing with the complicated problems of interconnecting these things. Uh, if you'd like to hear more, 
uh, if you'd like to hear what we've done, uh, you can come see us at booth 409 and learn more about how to deal with these challenges. Thank you. Thank you.